today I'm sharing how to make a simple but maybe a little bit messy DIY spring fairy garden that I made using stuff I found at Dollar Tree. This was really fun to make and I think once you start creating other ideas are going to start popping up in your head. I'm excited to share so let's get started. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. Today's video is part of the Dollar Tree Garden DIY Challenge. A group of four of us got together and did our own take of Dollar Tree Garden DIYs. And the cool thing about it is I get to connect and collaborate with other awesome creators and I get to share them with you, such as DIY from house to home, Happiness Created is also joining us today. OK at Home DIY is also joining us today. I'm going to link all of these channels in the description box below. I really do hope you check it out and subscribe if you haven't already because they have such good DIYs, you're not going to want to miss them. Alrighty y'all, to get started, we need to head to Dollar Tree to get our supplies. Dollar Tree pretty much has everything that you need to create a fun and affordable miniature indoor fairy garden. You're going to need some birdhouses and as you can see there are a couple different shapes that you can get. I put mine on a wooden board which they also have there and keeping mine indoors but traditionally fairy gardens you know they're usually outside. I picked up some other things that I thought might be fun to add like these wood curl roses and this bag of rocks which always every time I say that I think of people saying you can just go kick rocks. <laughs> Anyways they had several different kinds of potpourri, which I thought looked woodsy to me. And that makes me think of fairy gardens, you know, woodsy kind of stuff. So I got all of my stuff out to get ready and to, you know, make the magic happen. But FYI, these wood slices are from Hobby Lobby. And I always tell y'all, so forgive me if I sound like a broken record, but don't buy the wood slices in the wood pile section. They are always for $49 and don't go on sale. And when that area does go on sale, it's for the stuff that is $4.99 and up. So the wood slices are always regular price. Instead, go over to the his and hers, the wedding section area. That goes on sale, I think, like every other week for 40% off. And the slices over there are $4.99, but 40% off makes them three bucks. So it's a better deal when they're on sale. And they're basically the same thing. So I had these limbs from a tree and I'm not sure where I got it because there are no trees in my yard. So I'll just say I got it from nature and I'm going to glue it to the corner over here because I'm going to put one of the houses on it. And I attached this wood limb branch thing to the cedar board with wood glue. And the cedar board is that leftover fencing material that I always use. And as I was thinking about this, I had to Google the difference between branch and limb on a tree because basically I don't remember where I got these branches from so I don't know if it's technically a branch or a limb so anyway with all of these birdhouses I removed the stickers and the little wood perch by using a heat gun and warming up the glue so I can wiggle the dowel out just a bit they come out pretty easily I think only one of them was like stuck in there to make the door I took three small craft sticks and cut them down to size with my not good scissors y'all please don't use your good scissors for this I don't want y'all to ruin a good pair if you have one if y'all make this I see a lot of people using miter shears I don't have those so I'm just using my not good scissors and then I glued the craft sticks together using another little scrap piece of craft um, stick as a brace kind of behind it you see me just kind of adding it on there kind of making almost looks like a little mini fence too but anyways now this cool shaped birdhouse came from Michael's but you could easily make one out of like a can maybe like a Pringles can that could she could cut that easier I think or maybe make it out of cardboard or like poster board and to make that cone top you really could just use poster board or maybe cardstock but it depends on how big the house is you could use those little wood curl things if you're making like really tiny ones but it all of course depends if this is going to be indoor or outdoor for you. So keep that in mind, you know, the materials that you're using. And here I'm just painting it a little bit. And as far as painting, it's kind of, it's kind of a you thing. You pick the colors you want. If you want dark and moody, go for that. If you want to be bright and cheerful, then do that. It is totally up to you. And some of the stuff I painted and some of the stuff I stained and some of the stuff I did a combination. So for the door for this house or the first house, I took a black Sharpie marker and I added a little dot for the doorknob and then two lines on the other side to look like hinges. It's so small it's kind of hard to be super detailed but you get the idea of what I'm doing. And then I glued that to the front of the house. 
and I wanted the house to be the houses to be bearing height so I used that limb that I glued earlier to the corner as kind of a stilt I guess you would call it to put the house on and I just put wood glue to attach it and then I took these wood slices and I made floating steps up to the house now to be completely honest these these aren't stable but if you don't mess with it it should be fine and I temporarily propped them up with some additional wood slices but I removed those later that was just to kind of hold it up there till I got it all glued and kind of stuck in place and then I took another piece of branch and I drilled a hole in the top and I had this fake succulent that I got from Dollar Tree and I cut the stem way down so it was just kind of like a nub and then I glued that into the hole and I'm making kind of like a tree well not kind of like a tree I am making a tree and then glued the branch and did we decide if we're going to call that a branch <laughs> anyway I think it's limb is a better word but don't hold me to that but anyway I glued that to the board and I used wood glue and hot glue and for the most part I used wood glue on the wood pieces but some of the stuff I did add hot glue for a more immediate hold I glued a pine cone down onto a wood slice and now I am adding some more wood slices to give it some height I also do that to another pine cone and I paint the top of one of the houses blue. I had painted it purple originally, but I was like, man, it's too much purple. So I wanted a little bit of variety. And like I said earlier, paint your fairy garden, whatever color your heart desires. It's your fairy garden for crying out loud. I made a little door out of a large craft stick and I painted it yellow. And by making a door, I mean, I cut the top part off of a craft stick <laughs> and I'm calling that a door. You know, see, it's not, I mean, this is really not hard to do. And I just, I wanted to paint it yellow because I thought the yellow looked kind of cheery. And here's where it starts to get a little messy. I have some reindeer moss from Dollar Tree and I'm going to put that all around the roof of this birdhouse. And I'm also giving, I'm going to put glue on the loop hanger part too and add moss there. But I'll make sure to leave that hole of the hanger open. Now this isn't hard, but it's just messy. And truthfully, that's not my favorite thing to do. I, I really do love the outcome especially you know like this one but when it comes to crafting I don't like to get super messy and my eye starts twitching a little bit and I just prefer to be a little neater when I craft although most crafters and DIYers are going to tell you it's nearly impossible to not be a little bit messy but I'm also taking this potpourri part here I just looked at what I was doing I'm taking this potpourri part right here and that's the stuff I got from Dollar Tree and taking out some of the bits and I'm not exactly sure what all these pieces are and quite honestly some look like bugs and if I'm being honest I don't want to dwell on that so I take these pieces and I glue them all around the house if these are buds don't don't tell me I just I'm you know better off not knowing but I take the craft stick and I'm gonna go to hot glue down these rocks I got these rocks from the Dollar Tree like I said before go kick rocks and I suppose I could have looked out of nature for these as well but I didn't and I'm making a rock ramp to go up to the house and just gluing it in place as I go I kind of wanted to cover that stick up so you really couldn't see the stick you know what I mean so like it would just look like the rocks but anyway okay there were these leaf type things in the potpourri bag but like papery thin and I don't want to say it but it almost like it was the skin from something and if it is a skin from something y'all just don't tell me okay don't tell me in the comments I don't need to know like I said before I'm on a need to know basis I do not need to know about that but I glued those to the roof because I thought it would look cool and kind of give it a different texture just like uh kind of look like bugs to me again anyways with these wood twirl rose things I made another little tree type thing and you could use these to make a house as it has that you know cool cone shape to it and I was just trying to make you know odd and unusual shapes and not be too uniform or like human looking I, I mean it's a fairy garden I think they should have like cool and unique stuff right so here we are at messy part B and basically the end and I'm taking that reindeer moss and I'm spreading some Aileen's tacky glue which I really don't like that much but I'm trying to use it up <laughs> and I'm spreading some down and then pressing down some of the moss on top and I'm trying to cover up all the empty spaces and I'm also adding bits of the potpourri to the empty spots as well you know just kind of trying to fill it all in and I'm just trying to fill in any gaps that I see I'm pressing it down pressing on the potpourri so it all stays in place and you know by the way this reminds me too that reindeer moss kind of smells and not I mean it smells funny like but not haha -ha funny but just kind of like got a scent to it and you know the potpourri didn't really smell that much but the reindeer moss it had a little bit of a smell I mean not a bad smell but it just kind of had a smell so 
Um, oh, I forgot to put these little bars on the window. So I'm taking some twigs and making those. And speaking of twigs, Scarborough Fair, or maybe it's called Scarborough Renaissance Festival, Scarborough Ren Fan, something like that. Whatever it's called, it's opening scene. And there used to be a fairy there and her name was Twig. Like that was her job to be a fairy. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool. A lot of people like to cosplay out there. And one time this guy was dressed like a barbarian or something. I don't know. Um, each Ren Fest has a time period that they cover. I don't, I don't remember what um, the Waxahachie one has, um, but it doesn't matter anyway because the people just go and they dress up just however they want to anyway. So and it's not relevant to the story. So I'm not exactly sure, but he had on this outfit that went over like one arm, like one shoulder, and it was super hot outside. And I wanted my girly to take a pic with the guy and uh, <laughs> the girl, they were just going up there to stand with him but he wanted to give them like the total experience. So he had one hand on his club thing that he had. And then he put his arm around Sarah. His sweaty armpit was on Sarah. Y'all, I was dying. I mean, oh my gosh. It was so freaking funny. And it was like totally, totally gross as well. But that doesn't really have anything to do with this DIY. And I bet you didn't think you'd get a story time out of this. But you did. So anyway. This is how it's turning out. This is how the DIY turned out and I think it looks so stinking cute. I just love it. I especially love the little house on the end with the little loop at the top. I just think it looks so cute and I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, let me know in the comments below and um, yeah, let me know if you're going to try something like this in the future. I'd love to see what you create. Thank y'all so much for joining me today as I crafted and created, and I hope you enjoyed the simple but messy <laughs> DIY Spring Fairy Garden that I made today. Let me know in the comments below what you think and what part was your favorite, if you had a favorite part. And don't forget, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already. I really do appreciate the support that you guys show my channel. And if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or on TikTok, my handle is Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye!